please welcome to the KitchenAid Cooking Theater, the former on-air reporter and anchor from right here in Chicago, the author of three best-selling cookbooks, the co-founder and CEO of Indian as Apple Pie, who creates custom spice blends and home goods. Please welcome Anupi Singla. Hey, everybody. Woo, I'm loud. Hi, Chris. So I have a question for you. Um, I'm gonna throw my book out there. Um, yes, your question. I forget my question already because oh, I got stage fright. That's too um, bad. So, what is the first step, Chris, oh, to no. recovery? To recovering from what? What is your first step? Come on, what do they say? The first step to recovery is to admit you have a problem. I, I, I have many problems. I just don't know which <laughs> one you're talking about. <laughs> so what I'm talking about is being scared out of your mind from your pressure cooker? Who is scared of their <laughs> pressure cooker? Okay, my friend Micah, we're live streaming this and she's out there in Chicago somewhere. She's a former uh, producer and news person. I'm a former reporter. And she told me before I came out here, she has two pressure cookers at home and she doesn't use them because she's so scared of them. And until I said that to her today, she didn't realize why she hadn't pulled them out of the boxes. So raise your hand again if you are scared of your pressure cooker. We are going to change that today and I'm gonna take those steps with you because I was scared too. It's ironic because in India, we use pressure cookers so much, it's totally Intuitive. If you think that the United States is ahead of the curve because now you're into these electric pressure cookers, not you, we, you're wrong. India, Malaysia, all these other countries, Spain were far ahead of us, but they did a lot of stovetop pressure cookers. Do you remember the ones with the whistle on, right? So my mother, when I was 10, we moved to this country when I was three. When I was 10, I watched her pressure cooker explode lentils onto my ceiling, and we worked for three to four days. We didn't outsource cleaning back then. We did it ourselves, and I still remember that. And so that's why I was so nervous to take on the pressure cooker. But now I am launching the Indian Pressure Cooker Project, and I have been testing and testing, and I want all of you to follow it with me. You'll eventually get on my Facebook page, Indian as Apple Pie, and we're gonna talk about um, pressure cookers. Today, I'm gonna show you how you prep your Indian kitchen, and we are gonna show you how to cook in your pressure cooker, um, but first, I'm gonna show you how to just basically deal with your prep. We'll take, um, I told you I don't know how to use this and I was gonna do something funky like that. And if you claim that you're perfect, I'm sorry, you're wrong, folks. All right, let's leave that over there. Can you we just, just leave that over there? You bet. You this is a new, yeah, okay. Um, so food processor, all right? It's got the blade in it. This is a little newer for me. It's actually much better than the old ones because you just kind of clip it right on. And I spent about 15 minutes back there getting really nervous and my armpits were sweating a little bit because I was like, this is a new piece of equipment. I've got to take a few minutes to kind of understand it. But basically, you want to keep your food processor close for Indian, okay? Because, um, you know, my father's from a village in India. I spent my whole life visiting it. We had an outhouse for a bathroom. That little old lady that sat with a mortar and pestle doing this all day, we don't have that here. I don't know, does anyone have one in their house? We don't have that, okay. <laughs> we don't, it's me. And so you've gotta have, you've gotta use your tools. One of the early um, criticisms on Amazon about my book was, why does she use the Vitamix? Why does she use the, the um, um, you know, all these other tools in the kitchen when that's not traditional? What, who's to say what's traditional in India? You gotta use the tools that are at your hand to save your time, right? So this is gonna be a tool for us to use. And what we wanna do is, we wanna grab our onion first, right? So this is what I do like on a Friday. If um, you know things are slowing down on a Friday, I try to keep it clear of work commitments and whatnot, and I'll just throw, and this is gonna work, right? Because we haven't actually technically used, um, do I have to cut this down a little bit more? I think we're good. Okay, beautiful. So we'll do you know one large onion. We're gonna shut this up. No, I'm not gonna shut up, we're gonna shut this up, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit it. A Couple more times. Put it on high, and it's gonna get there. 
what we'll do is, and the only thing that um, we can do to fix that is just chop those onions up a tiny bit more. The key is use your um, red or your white onions. Don't use oversweet onions. Um, and we're gonna throw this over, thanks. No, that's okay, we'll leave it. It's just a show anyway. So we'll just take the larger chunks out. So remember next time, just chop it up a little bit more. And this is a smaller um, size as well, which is great because this really gets your product pureed. And let's try it one more time. There's no pressure. This is life being like that. Okay, that's it. no pressure. We'll get it. I once did this with my own food processor on uh, NBC in Philadelphia, and uh, I couldn't even get the lid off for like, and it was live. Um, so it doesn't matter. Live is actually much more fun than taped, I think. But that's a former reporter talking that way. So all we're gonna do is take this out, okay? And you're gonna put it to the side. And I wanna take this blade out, which just pulls right up, which is so, so convenient. And is it easier if I twist this off, you think? No twist. No, oh, there's no hook. Got it, got it. And we're going to pull this off. Oh my gosh, so much going on. All right, so we will take this out. Now, another trick and tip, and I always love giving lots of tips as I am cooking. Um, we had a couple of jars out here, those jelly jars. They're. Perfect. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what I do. And I just went to container store and got these jelly jars. They're glass. It's really important if you can store your ingredients in either glass or metal. Ayurvedically, right? That's an old tradition in India. This does not leach any chemicals into your foods. Now, obviously, a lot of the plastics these days are better quality, but glass is always the best thing to store things in, or stainless steel, which I've got for my spices. So all I do is I stick it in one of these, I put the top on, and then I stick it in the fridge, okay? That is good for about a week. If you think you're gonna need it for longer, stick it in the freezer like that, or ice cube trays, no water, no oil, just shove those little cubes filled with the onion puree, Put it into your freezer. When you want to cook, pull it right out. You know, push those little cubes out, and then um, rock and roll. You can start cooking. I traditionally will take that out in the morning. If I know what I want to cook for dinner, and I need my onion, ginger, garlic, then I will just go ahead and pull all those cubes out in the morning, let it sit in the fridge and defrost for me. All right, so we've got the garlic as well. And um, we were going to get the lid, throw this little guy on, and you're going to help me. Of course. Oh God, my, I'm sweating again. I'm getting all nervous. You're good. Mm. We like to give you new things. All right, thank here. you. <laughs> um, there we go. So remember, onion, ginger, garlic, and tomatoes, and chilies. All right, so those are the key um, fresh ingredients that you're going to need for Indian. So just pull it right up and scoop this out. Taylor, will you do me a favor? I'm going to have you blend or grind the ginger and then grind the chilies for me as well. Will you just take this out into a bowl? I'm going to start chatting. Thank you. Um, this I don't have at home. I'm taking her home with me as a souvenir from the show because she's so amazing. Um, thank you for that. So that's basically the process, right? So those are your fresh ingredients. Have I talked about any ingredient yet that is not recognizable to anybody in the audience? Onion, ginger, garlic, tomato, right? So you can go through that process with everything, store it, or put it in the ice cube trays and store it in the freezer or in the fridge. Um, now, the next thing I want to talk about, and I'm just going to reach over you, Taylor, excuse me, are chilies, all right? So the chilies that we love are the chilies, obviously, with heat, a serrano, or I love Thai chilies, but we don't love them just for the heat. We love chilies 
for flavor. So all you're going to do, you've got your chili here. Take your stem off, right, obviously. And then you're going to just slice them down thinly. And don't take the seeds out. We don't understand that whole Western mentality of taking the seeds in the membrane. That's where all the flavor and the heat is. So you don't need to do anything outside of just chopping it up. Remember, with chilies, a bit counterintuitive, the more you chop it and you slice it, the more heat you're releasing. Does that make sense? So if you don't want as much heat, my phone is buzzing in my back pocket. It's kind of distracting me there. Um, you just leave your chilies whole or slice them in half and put them into your dish and then pull them out when you're done. So if you have somebody at home that doesn't eat as much chili, just do that for them and they just kind of want the flavor. All right, now I'm gonna show you spices. When we put this stuff together um, like this and set it up like this, it's, it's a fancy French word called mise en place, everything in its own place, right? And I always talk about this when I come to do my demos. We talk about mise en place for fresh ingredients. And how does that smell? Can you smell that? Can you, is it like very pungent? Oh, I love that. My mouth's watering. Um, we talk about mise en place for fresh ingredients, but no one ever really addresses mise en place for spices. And I love talking about this because we're at the Houseware Show and, well, hashtag IHHS 2019 if you're hashtagging, FYI. Um, but we're here talking about gadgets, right? And one of my favorite gadgets is my spice box. It's a super easy, simple, and Polly's in the front row nodding because she's heard me talk about this and give this sermon so many times. But in India, this is how we organize and store our spices. I don't mean to profile, but are you kind of South Asian, maybe? Back? OK, see? I know. And people don't under, quite understand it yet. But once they see it, the, the light bulb goes off. Seven of your most essential spices right in this masala dabba. Masala is spices. Dabba means box. Super simple. I've taken it to another level. I have like 10 boxes at home. I have an Indian box. I've got an Italian box. I've got a soup box. I've got an oatmeal toppings box. I've got a baking box. So what I do is I just grab this when I want to cook, take the lid off, and start cooking with it. Now, the reason why this is critical, especially for Indian, is that Indian cooking is super fast, OK? And this is something that Mother Jaffrey, who really is the queen of Indian cooking in the United States, told me once when I interviewed her for an article that I did for the Chicago Tribune. She said, she goes, Anupi, how would I cook effectively Indian when everything is so hot and I've got to get everything um, in the oil and in the ghee right away without burning. How do I do that? And um, she said, the way you basically do that is by having all your spices here and not in a cabinet where you've got to take the tops off, figure out, oh my god, I don't have this, I don't have that. Have it all together, OK? Now what I'm going to show you is this is the electric pressure cooker, right? So what's fun about these is everything's kind of contained. It's not on your stove top, so all that heat is coming from the internal element. And what I've just done is I've hit a button called saute. Does everyone use pressure cookers these days? OK, everyone's like a little nervous, but kind of um, getting it. Saute button for Indian on a pressure cooker is super important because it allows you to do what's called tharka. Tharka, spelled T-A-R-K-A or T-A-R-D-K-A, because Hindi is a phonetic language. There's different ways to spell it. But the idea is infusion. So if you cook Italian and you want to infuse the olive oil with garlic, you slice the garlic, you put it into the hot olive oil, you get that infusion. The spices do the same thing. If you don't do that, you're actually not doing a service to your spices. And your food's not getting that extra layer of beautiful flavor and essential oils. So all I've done is I hit the saute mode on this. And there's a couple different options. You could do normal or more. I go for more so it gets nice and hot. And we're just going to wait for it to hit hot. And once it does, we're going to grab our oil, which is here. Now, it could have been ghee, right, which is clarified butter. And anyone want to shout out why we use clarified butter instead of regular butter? Yes. 
beautiful. I love you. Can I come over and kiss you? You're amazing. It doesn't burn. The smoke points higher. Another reason people don't realize this on ghee, why do they use it, especially in India, where about 70% of the population lives in villages? Yes. Say it. No refrigeration. So that is why oftentimes they'll opt for ghee, especially in countries like that. And we're seeing more and more ghee on the market these days. If you tend to lean plant-based, and you don't want the ghee, or for other reasons you don't, that's OK. You can use an oil. But use a high smoke point oil, or use an oil and or use an oil that doesn't really give you a lot of like flavors that you don't want in Indian food. So like an avocado oil is going to have high smoke point, but then you don't necessarily always want that layering of flavor. So this is a grape seed oil. And we're going to go ahead and put this in here. It's getting hot. It hasn't hit hot here on this panel yet, but that's OK. And now I'm going to do what um, is really the more interesting part of the um, demo. And it's all going to happen right inside the pot. And I didn't even tell you what we're cooking yet, did I? We are cooking a dish called rajma. Anybody know what rajma is or tasted rajma? OK. The reason why you haven't is because it's like this um, comfort food that, have you had rajma? OK, yeah. And how often do you eat rajma if you could? Yeah, once a week, every weekend. I know. And I've been testing rajma for a month and a half, and my kids loved rajma. And it's now on their banned list of foods, because they've been eating it every day for 30 days. But that's a sidebar issue. But Rajma for us Punjabis, who are from North India, is like chicken noodle soup. It's like comfort to the soul. It is beans and rice, red beans and rice. Now, real quick, this is smoking a little bit. I want it lower. So let's just do this, because I'm talking. We're going to turn it off for a second. So this is how, when something goes um, not quite how you want it, you got to watch what's going on in your kitchen to gauge what you need to do. This is a little more smoke than I want. It's a little hotter than I wanted it to be, but it never hit hot on the panel, and that's OK. So we're going to just pull this off and let it cool a tiny, tiny bit. Because the thing is, if you put your spices in this and it's so hot, they're just going to burn. So there's no point in doing that. So we're just cooling it down a tiny bit. See, I planned for that mistake. It's in my notes, Chris. I promise. All right. So we got to cool down a tiny bit. And if you were on your stove doing this in a pan, just pull it right off the burner, right? So let's do your cumin seeds. Um, I'm going to grab, there's recipes here. So you can come up later and grab one. This is about a teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons of cumin seed. Now, most recipes will tell you to use cumin powder. That's how I know the person that is writing the recipe is not actually Indian. I tried one of those recipes from a magazine once, and my husband refused to eat dinner because it was so not Indian food to us, right? But I thought it was fun, would be fun to try. So here we go. 15 seconds. The seeds are critical because it really pulls the essential oils out of your, um, your seeds into the oil. And what we're going to do now is grab our turmeric and throw a little bit of turmeric powder in here. Typically, I don't like to use powders in my hot oil or in my ghee, largely because it'll burn. But turmeric is a little different. It's a little hardier. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I don't want this down on the cutting board. It's yellow from the turmeric. And we don't want that on the cutting board, because then I won't be asked back next year. Maybe that's what happened a couple of years ago. We're going to put the, um, it didn't, I promise, I promise. Um, I have a really bad sense of humor because I'm from Philadelphia. That's where I grew up. So just I've got like that edge. Yeah, you just have to kind of go with it. OK, cinnamon stick, black cardamom pod. I've got some up here if you want to come up here and take a look. Later, we've got some cloves that we're going to throw in here. And they're just kind of sizzling away. And then I've got a bay leaf. So this is where you can kind of play with your spices, OK? So now we're getting the heat back up to where we want it. And what I want to do now is take 
my onion. Okay, this is that ground onion. It could have also been just chopped and minced onion. This is a really critical step for Indian cooking. This is how you make your masala, okay? So as we listen to this sizzle, because this is going to take just a couple minutes, look at all that steam pulling off. And remember, you do want your onion in there on its own, because onion has a certain level of moisture. So if you go and mix your onion with your ginger garlic, your onion doesn't really get cooked properly, either, either does your ginger and your garlic. So we're just going to kind of be a little patient with the onion. Now, you saw all the spices I used, cumin seed, right? We used turmeric powder. What else did we use? Cinnamon stick, black cardamom pod, not green. Don't substitute green for black. Black is a woodier taste profile. Green is more floral. And I will tell you where you can get some of that black cardamom pod. Uh, Devon, Spice House, uh, in, uh, in Old Town in Chicago, any Indian grocery store, OK? Um, but what? And this is a trick question. Do we have books left? All right. So whoever is the first one, you got to raise your hand. Otherwise, you know, we're going to get mobbed. Because the Indian slow cooker, like, we've sold a lot of copies, like 100,000 copies of this book. And we only have three left now. So apparently, I don't want everyone mobbing me. What is the spice that I did not talk about? What is it? Bay leaf. That's a great one, but that's not the one I'm thinking about. But I kind of did because I threw it in here. But that was a really good try. Yes. What? Cloves I put in already. I did talk about cloves. Pepper. No. You're not allowed to answer. I'll give you a book later just because, you know, we're the same he people. He has a book. Huh? He has a book. <laughs> oh, you have a book. You're trying to get another one, you. We're really overachievers in the Asian American community, <laughs> FYI. I know you know that already. Anyone else? Come on, what spice did I not talk about that everyone thinks we cook with? Yes. Sorry? Salt, no. Curry. All right. Who said that, though? Who said that? <laughs> so I, I know. You already have a book? Yeah. Did you get a book already? So we do not use curry powder. And I say this all the time because I want us to eventually get it. Curry powder is a Western derivation of what the Brits thought Indians should taste like and does taste like. And that's OK. They try to replicate it. We don't use it. It became more common in countries like Malaysia, in Singapore, and all of that. We, I've written four cookbooks. Not one recipe used curry powder. OK? So we use whole spices to make real Indian food. If you want the curry powder and you like it, Use it. I'm not in your kitchen. I'm not judging you. But I'm telling you right now, a lot of folks don't like that taste profile. It's a very flat, kind of chalky taste profile. And that's not what we do. All right, ginger. And then I'm going to use a little bit of garlic from over here. So what I'm making is a curry. So can someone tell me why this is called curly curry and we don't use curry powder? What's a curry? What is it? A mixture of things, kind of. It is a mixture of things. But as I build my curry, I'm going to put in tomato paste. You can do that or fresh tomatoes, but I'm going to get tomato paste in here. I just want a smoother curry. To us, a curry, a really good curry, is gravy. So that soupy gravy and that broth, so when the Brits go, I'm going out for a good curry, they're going out for a good gravy. They're not going out for something that has curry powder in it. Make sense? Any questions so far? No? OK. So we're going to let this cook. Now, the key is with, with this mixture, oh, and then also chilies. OK, I know that seems like a lot of chilies. It's pretty much what I use at home. I'm just going to throw it in there. Because I know when you guys taste this in the back, you're going to want it hot. Because then if I don't make it hot, I get emails from people going, I thought your food was Indian, but it wasn't even spicy. So now what I want to do is, now that that is cooking away, I want to put a few other spices in there. We use a lot of beautiful spice blends 
Garam masala. What does garam mean? Hot. Hot, warm, right? Warming spices. Masala, mixture of spices. So garam masala is a combination. Cumin, Polly's falling asleep because she's heard this lecture so many times. Cumin seed, coriander powder, cinnamon stick, dry roasted, and then ground down. And all of the spice blends that we sell at Indian as apple pie are the garam masalas, the chana masala, which is a chickpea powder, sambar masala. We're in Whole Foods and beyond and all these foodie stores because people are starting to realize that the real blends matter when you're actually cooking Indian food and you want it to taste right. So what I'm going to do now is, and another tip that Mother Jaffrey gave me on the spice box is, put your spices in here in the order that you're going to use them, right? Makes sense. In the middle goes my salt. That's just me. That's my preference. Cumin seed. Uh, I already did it wrong. No, cumin seed. Here we go. We're going the other way. Turmeric powder. The bay leaf, the clove, the cinnamon stick. I just have a little bit in here. The gutta masala, coriander powder. Okay? So I'm going to pull from those. I'm going to pull the gutta masala. Let's just kind of wing it and put two teaspoons in here. And then the coriander powder. Let's do another two. The beauty of the coriander powder is it's a seed that grows into cilantro, right? It has a very citrusy, light, beautiful taste profile, so it kind of lightens up your dish a little bit. How does that smell so far? Not bad, right? And I think all of you can do this so far. Super easy. So that's cooking away. And what we'll do is now we want to add the beans. So rajma is kidney bean curry, right? So gravy and kidney beans. The key on beans is you got to remember, um, <clears throat> canned versus dried, which one would you prefer? Why do you think I always lean towards dried beans? Any thoughts on that? Why are dried better than canned? So fresher, but the thing is, a canned variety has already absorbed all the liquid it's going to absorb. So now you're adding liquid and flavor. It's just flat on that bean. You're really not doing anything with it. So that's why we lean towards uh, dried beans. Another thing is incredibly, incredibly affordable, right? So this is about uh, three cups of kidney beans. This cost me $2.25, maybe $2.50, probably a little bit less than that. That's at the bulk section of Whole Foods, even. So you could go to a co-op or wherever. You could do that with black beans. You could do that with black-eyed peas. You can do that with chickpeas, right? So all we did with this is it's important on the kidney beans to soak them a little bit because they have anti-nutrients in them. Not all beans are like that. Soak them even for 10 minutes and then drain, OK? So we soaked these, I believe, overnight. Is that right? OK, perfect. So look at this. And then I'm going to show you another technique on cooking these beans and take a look at the difference here. OK? So this is soaked beans. This is the same amount, three cups, that barely soaked. So look at that difference there, right? So your beans are basically going to grow for you in your pot or in your container. One of the biggest mistakes people make with cooking lentils, beans, peas, is you cook them in a container that's too, or a pot that's too small for them. They need breathing room, room to grow into your pot, right? So now this is cooked up really beautifully. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add the beans in. All right, so let's mix, the, mix this up. So that is all of your masala. And just so you know, because I know this is an industry show too, I just want to put out there, one of the, the shelf stable sauces that I offer through my company, Indian as Apple Pie, is called a Punjabi masala. That masala that was in the bottom of the pan is what I replicated in a jar. 
And once people, once the light bulb goes off for people, they love it because you could take a scoop of that and throw that in and just have dinner on the table in about 20 minutes versus doing all the chopping, the grinding, and the cooking down. I've done it for you. All right, so we've got this nice and mixed up. And now we're just going to basically put salt and water in there. So the salt is here. Typically, I salt my food pretty liberally. I love salt, and salt really pops your spices for you. You can, because you're making it at home, do whatever you want. And it's also lifestyle. I really don't eat processed foods. I work from home, so I'm super spoiled, and so is my husband, actually, because we often um, just do everything at home and cook at home. And I'm just looking for water. I know it's around here. Oh, look at you. Thank you. All right, so about eight cups of water. And also, if you want to check out this pressure cooker recipe, it is on my website. OK, so the website's Indian is apple pie on the blog section. Here's also what I want to tell you. I talk about, and I always cook, family-style recipes. A lot of the pressure cooker books out there right now are doing one cup of beans. If I did one cup of beans at home, that would be inhaled in 30 seconds. And they'd be like, what's next, right? So we want more. And we also want enough to have as a leftover. So <clears throat> you have to cook what's good for you and your family. And there's different sizes also of pressure cookers. So when I'm cooking for the entire family and I want a little leftover, I'll use my six quart like this. And then I will um, make the four cups of beans. And that'll cook for about an hour. If you don't want to cook that long in your pressure cooker because it so feels a little anti, you know, um, it doesn't feel intuitive to cook an hour in a pressure cooker, then just use half that amount and cook for 30 minutes. So what we're going to do right now is go ahead and cancel this out. Let's put the lid on. So you hear the little music going. Want to make sure that the, the vent is turned so that it's closed, right, all the way to the back. And we want to hit pressure cook. Hit that button. It's programmed already for 35 minutes. The issue, though, because we've put four, three to four cups of product in here, we've got eight cups of water, that's really not, it just turned on for me. Let's turn that off one time. OK. It's not going to cook in that amount of time. If you had a cup or two cups, it would, right? So we're going to up the cooking times, hit pressure cook, and then hit the plus button. And I'm going to get it to 60 minutes. But this will cook successfully in a little bit less. My issue has been with pressure cooker. It is never going to be the same sort of creaminess on beans that you're really getting from a slow cooker, right? So what I've been doing is I test and I experiment with recipes. I want to get that same sort of texture, that creaminess. It's really coming at an hour. But maybe if I use less product, we really just want to go 30 to 40 minutes. But you'll kind of follow the journey as I start to test on my Facebook page and on my blog uh, as well. So now let's talk about pressure cooker, slow cooker. Who's a fan of the slow cooker? Anybody use a slow cooker? We still have folks that love their slow cooker, right? So my friend Micah always says, the slow cooker is like your grandmother, so reliable and so cuddly and so awesome and safe, right? And the pressure cooker is like your wild, crazy cousin that you don't always want to see all the time. And you're a little nervous around. So we have to kind of go, like work towards like loving the pressure cooker. But the slow cooker is super, super simple. Same sort of concept cooking in a slow cooker as you would the pressure cooker. But here you go. I don't have to do that step with the tharka. It's crazy because the slow cooker does my cooking for me. So I'm going to take my beans that I just soaked for about 10 to 15 minutes, OK? And remember, pressure cooker, super fast. Slow cooking over here, right? And the advantage of the slow cooking is some of you are going to be like, hey, I, I live fast. I don't need a slow cooker. I don't want to slow down. Well, what happens if you get organized enough, and I don't always do this every day, but you're organized enough to throw your stuff into the slow cooker in the morning? You can just leave it on all day. And it's cooking all day. You come home from work, 
your food is done. That's the idea of the slow cooker. So your beans are going to go right in here. And if you want the recipes, I wrote a whole book about it. <laughs> Check them out. You got books. My publisher is in Evanston Agate Publishing. They are amazing and super generous. They offer to give away books today, so I really appreciated that they did that. Let's grab this guy and put it down here. And what we're going to do with this is we're just going to dump the same ingredients in the slow cooker. And the reason why I love the slow cooker is there's a concept of cooking called dumpucked cooking, which is slow over a low flame in a clay pot that's sealed and only broken. The seal's broken when you open it up to eat. Sound familiar? It's the crock pot, right? So you can do the same thing that we did in the pressure cooker, but now you're going to let this baby do all the work for you. So we've got onion, we've got the garlic, we've got some ginger going in, same ingredients, but shockingly, no oil, no um, ghee or anything like that. I know it's pretty liberal on the spices. Let's do tomato paste again because we've got it. We'll throw that in. You could do two chopped tomatoes if you want to. We'll put our bay leaf in and we'll do our cloves and our cinnamon stick and then our turmeric. Doesn't really matter the order that you're putting these spices in. Cumin seed, black cardamom pod, and then coriander powder, and I'm gonna grab my gutta masala and throw that in here as well. Again, the recipe for the amounts is in the book, but this is really how I cook generally, is I kinda just wing it and throw things in, because now I know about how much product I need, and all we're gonna do with this guy is throw eight cups of water in here as well. And that is going to cook on high at, for 11 hours. Now, 11 hours seems like a lot, but that is getting your product into your slow cooker at 6 a.m. before you leave for work. And by the time you get back at 5, your dinner is done. And it's funny, I was on CBS Local Chicago yesterday and I had a pot of rajma, I demoed this on air, and I had it rumbling around in my car because you gotta throw everything in the car and I had to go to a meeting, then I came back, and I just put it on to cook, and it was the same thing, we just dumped and went, and that was it, and it was done. I had it for breakfast, that's how crazy we are in our house, and it was so delicious, and it came out so creamy, and it does have a little bit of a different texture, than your pressure cooker. So there's a place for every tool and gadget in your kitchen. You just have to know what's coming out of it and what to expect. So let's show you, I'm gonna take you down this way and show you, uh, I'm used to having a camera follow me, sorry guys. Um, but <laughs> I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So we're gonna open this up. So remember this cooked and this little button is down, right? So that means it's safe to open. If this is pushed up, that means the steam is kind of pushing that button up, that valve up. You do not want to open it. It won't even let you. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. Should we do the salad first, though, ladies? What do you mean up to me? It's up to you. You're running the show. Let's do the salad first. Okay, I'm going to show this to you in a second because I want to plate it. But I want to also tell you that Indian food is not just about making your main dish, throwing it out there with rice or with bread. It's also about the layers and layers and layers of texture that we get from whatever we're serving with it. So often making the actual Indian dish is not that hard. It's all the sides that come with it, if you really want to eat it traditionally, that becomes complicated sometimes. A side salad is must. If you go into a restaurant and they don't give a side salad to you, an Indian restaurant, and especially North Indian, that means they're really not doing you a service. Ask for it. And ask for a salad of onion. You know what I'm talking about. Onion and chilies and cucumber with lemon on the side. 
right? My kids do that. They insist on that. And then we have people around us at the other tables asking for it too. Because the idea is when you're eating Indian food, you have salty, you have citrus, you have crunchy, you have salt, so soft. You have all those textures and flavors in one bite. So the idea is it is super satisfying for your body to have all of that in one bite. And that's why when you eat Indian food, you just want more and more and more. All right, so we're going to throw this lemon in here. We've got a few seeds, but we'll pull them out at the end. No big deal. Let's take this guy out. Now, you could use lime as well. And this is just chopped onion and cucumber. And this is called a kachumber, which is just its chopped up salad. You could use anything crunchy. You could use daikon in there. I just went to Devon, which is our little India here in Chicago, and I picked up some kohlrabi. So I peel that and I'll chop that up. Radishes. Uh, what else? We put um, tomato in here as well. Now, even on the flights, the United flights, the Indian food is actually, the international ones, I should say, have, has gotten so elevated where they're putting like pomegranate seeds in their salads and in their ratas, their yogurts. So lemon juice, right? A little bit of regular salt. And then I'm going to grab my spice box and throw a spice in that I call black salt. Not that I call it. It is called black salt, which is the umami of Indian cuisine. And then we're going to do a little bit of red chili powder, OK? That's it. There's no oil in our salads. And that is what kind of gives us that elevated sort of taste profile with our dish. And we always want to have something like this. In fact, this is the way we'll like slice daikon, cucumbers, lemon juice, black salt, regular salt, red chili powder. And my kids will literally sit in front of the TV and they'll have like a whole tray of that. They'll have their potato chips on the side and usually they end up not eating, eating, eating those because this is so addictive. And another great spice blend to get into your repertoire is chaat masala. Chaat is spelled C-H-A-A-T. And we sell our own blend made from my own recipe. I interviewed a lot of street vendors in Delhi for a really good recipe. And you can also put that into your salad um, because that has also those sort of tart um, you know, flavor profiles in it with the black salt as well as dried mango powder. So remember, it's like this combination of salty, citrusy, uh, a little bit of tart, all of that kind of coming together for you with the crunch. Now, on the rice, we love basmanti rice. Basmanti in Sanskrit means uh, fragrant. It's a long grain rice. So it's one cup rice, two cups water. Now, remember how I did the tharka with the hot oil or the ghee and the cumin seed? do the same thing with the rice. So this little mixture of spices, again, take out the bay leaf, because that's only going to work on the rajma and the other curries that you make. But the cinnamon stick, the cloves, the black cardamom, those three spices, they combine into your rice. So if we wanted to make this a real Punjabi restaurant style rice, we heat your oil. Those three spices with cumin seed, the exact same thing we did right there, go into there, your rice goes in, mix it a bit, and then your water, and let it simmer and cook down for you. That also goes into making my chai. So when people complain Indian food is so complicated, there's so many spices, what you got to remember is that we use those spices over and over and over again, and we swap out often those main ingredients and it still does taste very different. But I know that there's a bit of a learning curve. In the West, they did a study, most recipes on average have two to three spices. Guess how many, on average, Indian recipes have? 10 to 12, right? So that's why it feels complicated, but you already have seven to eight we've used for this dish, and you can do this, can't you? Yes? 
Okay. Any questions? Is it too late in the day for questions? Everyone's just chilling? All right. Um, let's show you what this Rajma looks like. So we're going to open this guy up. There's always moisture right there, so we're going to get that out. Thank you. Appreciate that. And we're going to plate it in here. The beauty of getting beans into your day is, I know people love to joke about beans, I've heard them all, but the thing is, they're very high in protein, high in fiber, low in fat, and low in calories. Why wouldn't you get it into your day? So we're going to dole this out, and it's beautiful. And you want it brothy. And let's clean this little guy off so it's servable. So, you know, we talked a little bit, but not much, about bread. So there's your rajma. And we'll eat this traditionally with rice, but we do eat a lot of bread. So here's another little quiz question. What bread do we eat in Indian cuisine? I hear none. Who said chapati? OK, thank you. Give that woman another book. <laughs> or she can donate it or do whatever you want. Give it to a friend. Because the point is, in the US, we keep thinking that we eat so much naan. We don't. I didn't eat naan until I was like 15, and a restaurant opened up in Philadelphia. Naan is leavened bread that's cooked in a tandoori oven that gets upwards of 900 degrees Fahrenheit. So who, do you have a tandoori in your house? Oh, yeah, you do? No, not yet. Oh, I, oh not yet? OK. I, I thought you said, oh, yeah. <laughs> who has a tandoori in their house? Who knows of someone that does, right? No one really does. There's no real perfect way to make naan in your home unless you have a real tandoori oven. We make roti, chapati, folka, OK? Three words for the same concept, because um, that is wheat is grown in Punjab, and that is our greatest, biggest crop. So we have wheat on hand, um, and then we make it into our chapati. It's a flat bread. It's just flour, chapati flour, and water. And literally, I mean, that's what we're eating at home. So if you look at a chapati or a roti versus a naan, you're talking about naan sometimes having, and I did a story for this, uh, about this for the Sun Times, because I was so interested and fascinated about it. Um, upwards of 500 calories, 70 grams of fat, and a roti is, is literally 70 calories and zero fat. So interesting, right? So it's like a tortilla. Um, and if you want to learn how to make them, got to come to one of my classes. Um, I teach here in Chicago. But here we go. That is your rajma, your chawal, and then your salad. And you can do this, right? Yes? Any questions? Not even one? All right. Asphodata, whatever it's called, that you do you use that. You I do, it, and thanks for bringing that up. So asafoetida, and I'm glad you brought it up. I actually was kind of overlooking it because I forgot to put it in. So thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that. Um, this is why I brought notes, Chris, this year, and I didn't even look at them once. Um, asafoetida, it's actually very funky. It's a resin, okay? And so they grind it down and. We can, we can pass this around, maybe. Do you think we can pass it around? Everyone, if everyone's careful, don't spill it. Because um, the, the nickname on the street, the cool kids call it devil's dung. Did you know that? It's called devil's Because of the smell. Very crazy smell, right? Not really. The idea is when you use asafoetida in your cooking, you heat your ghee or oil, put a tiny little pinch right in there, it almost gives a flavor profile of leeks, but it also tones down any kind of negative effects, like gassy effects from the beans. That's the idea. 
So once you get it in your food, you really won't smell it at all. And you want to keep it in the container that it comes in so it's nice and contained otherwise. Um, you know, the other thing is, too, you want to keep in mind, we should also use our common sense when it comes to eating. I always say, you could say that, you know, beans, X, Y, Z, whatever, but it really is what you're used to eating in your day. If you don't eat beans at all, yeah, you're going to feel maybe uncomfortable. I don't eat a lot of meat in my diet. That's just how I choose to eat. If I eat a piece of chicken or whatever it might be, then I feel uncomfortable. It's just really what your body is used to. So that is part of that whole process of being able to digest the fiber and the protein in beans. So I would recommend, um, if you can, getting beans into your day-to-day. -day. Um, and obviously, if you're worried about it, use a little bit of asafoetida in your cooking. You really can only get asafoetida now. I mean, you can get it at some of the spice houses and stores, but um, in Indian grocery stores is really your best bet. All right? Hope that helped. We've got recipes up here. And I've got also these cards that have a list of the key spices on the back and what they do for you. So anti-inflammatories, great for the heart, diabetes. Did you know all this, Chris? Yeah? I don't know why Mike wasn't on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Anupi Singla. Thank you so much, Anupi, Thanks for, for coming me. back.